Hello, guys and gals. Me, Mudahar, and de-bloating and losing weight is great. But wouldn't my fat ass love to know? <laughs> All jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen, de-bloating windows is kind of like a requirement these days. And, uh, you know, a month ago I made a video that, you know, did pretty well. You know, I talked about de-bloating windows. And I think those videos do really well because there's definitely somebody on the internet that is just... You know, I installed Windows, it's a, it's a little bit too heavy. Can I make it lighter? Can I make my games run faster? Can I make my programs run faster? And uh, people just look up how to de -bloat Windows, and boom, there it is. My video is available, you can install a few options. Though in that video, one of the options that I used was uh, one that uh, was a pretty poor showcase for a developer known as Talon. Now the guy behind it, KO, which is the YouTube handle right over here, he uploaded and rewrote Talon, and one of the reasons for it was a problem. And the problem was me. I actually had an issue using his tool. So today I want to show you how to deep load Windows the fastest way that you can, the easiest way that you can, so fast and easy that you will have no excuse not to deep load your system. So of course, ladies and gentlemen, obviously the issue that I had, and his video pretty much like showcases, my video showcases it too, Microsoft Windows Defender was not having a good time with me using his tool. They were trying to stop me from running it, and even during the running operation, mid-run, it would just kill the entire debloater, leaving a process half finished. Now of course, in this case, I'm going to use his software, of course, ladies and gentlemen, on a fresh Windows 11 installation. Now this is as fresh as you're going to get the only changes I installed SWAT 4 okay so again I don't think that's going to cause a big issue but if it does then let it be known that SWAT 4 and installation of it and Windows debloating do not go hand in hand but of course obviously a Windows installation is pretty bloated by default for instance if you install something you'll notice you know I've got my little start option and of course there's a whole bunch of applications that have been installed for instance you might use game bar but you might not be a fan of Microsoft ClipChimp. <laughs> ClipChimp. <laughs> Whoo, my, my Twitch brain is getting to me. You might not like Microsoft Teams. I know that I don't, okay? You may not want the news app. You may not want a lot of stuff underneath the hood that Microsoft basically forces onto you. And the case for deep loading is pretty strong. With a lot of artificial intelligence and a lot of unneeded features, yes, a basic Windows installation has its requirements go up. So deep loading does mean that you do get some performance increases, especially if you have an older computer where, yeah, to get the extra five frames on a video game might be a necessity. Now, since I game in virtual machines, whether it be bare metal or a virtual machine in VMware, just for like older, like Windows XP era games, I probably do want to have a debloated system. So you could ask Microsoft's built-in AI, how do I debloat Windows? And it'll guide you through an aspect of debloating it step by step. So again, you can even follow video tutorials to which I'm in there too. Explained why deep loading is essential and how to do it safely. Yes, this is a follow-up to that video. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So let's say you want to get down to deep loading, right? You want to get rid of stuff like learn about this picture where you could learn all about the photos Microsoft puts on. So opening up a browser, in this case, we're going to use Microsoft Edge, okay? And we're going to go to deepload.win. Okay, so that's the actual page right over here. Save time, money, and your privacy in two easy clicks. So I'm going to try it again. We're going to download that for Windows 11. So of course, we're just going to download this tool and woohoo, it's already blocked as unsafe by Microsoft Defender Smart Screen. Now, hopefully you can click those three little items and hit keep. Oh, this app is unsafe. So again, you you, you still you kind of have to tell it, you just, just let me keep it, okay? I just want to install this. Now, I don't actually disagree with Microsoft here. And according to KO's video, a lot of this, uh, oh, they actually deleted it. <laughs> Microsoft is protecting me too much. The thing about this is, is Microsoft does jump in a lot to protect you from running malware. And I'm not going to say this is a bad thing because generally speaking, it's good to have an antivirus be a little bit on the heavy handed side uh, than not. But of course, it's detecting something in his installation package in how they've packaged their, uh, you know, scripts into AXE files that's tripping Windows Defender and causing it to delete this tool.
So of course I'm going to turn off real-time protection, and even if you turn off real-time protection, you don't actually turn off real-time protection. So we're going to try re-downloading this tool once again. We're going to hit keep, we're going to show more, and we're going to keep anyways. We're going to open this tool and hopefully it doesn't actually delete it. Otherwise, this is just a redo and that guy's hard work to make a 2.0 version of this tool is fucking useless. So of course, one thing you'll notice is it has a little administrator shield. Now you want to be real careful running tools. I want to just say any tool that you run for debloating, make sure you trust it. Okay, much like how I tell you guys, hey, if you're installing a gamer version of Windows 11, like Atlas OS or anything, these are all at your risk. Okay, I wouldn't personally do it. But deep loaders are a little bit different. There's a lot of trusted tools out there. If you don't trust this, uh, I think you can trust Chris Titus Text Windows 11 tool. There's a deep load script that I personally always use that, uh, you know, I, I, I use it and I haven't had an issue. But anyways, when you run it, it'll say, oh, this is a malicious file. It may cause damage to your device. I think we're good. Let me run it anyways. <laughs> And of course, it said, threats are found. So immediately it gives you a little shield and you want to hit yes. And you want to just fire it up, see what it tells you. And right now it feels like nothing is happening. We're just going to minimize all these apps. Actually, we're going to close these applications uh, and we're going to close Windows Defender. We're even going to close Edge. So it keeps saying that it found a bunch of threats, right? Like a lot of threats, especially this Trojan right here. Kepa Vel RFN in Talon.exe. So again, if you don't feel safe doing this, don't do it. And of course it just completely stops this. So if I open up this new Talon script, it'll tell you that, bro, there is a lot of errors. So for instance, check ensure defender is disabled. Talon needs your C drive added as an excluded folder in the Windows Defender to ensure defender won't cause problems. To, in order to add that exclusion, right, you want to go all the way to those Windows Defender settings, right? So in your in your basic Windows installation, in your control panel, you want to go to Virus Threat Protection. You want to go all the way to, uh, you know, Manage Settings down over here. And inside the Manage Settings, you want to actually go to Exclusion. So add or remove an exclusion. Hit Yes once again. Add the exclusion. And inside over here, we're going to do Folder. So now that we're adding a folder, we're going to go to our PC, we're going to hit that C drive, and we're just going to select the whole thing as an exclusion, okay? The whole thing, the whole actual thing. Now that being said, once we hit start over here, it should basically register in Talon. It shouldn't go crazy. And uh, I guess I should have done that in the beginning, but unfortunately this is where we had to go. So now it works, okay? So you've got Chrome, you've got Edge, you've got Brave, Firefox, and LibreWolf. Now if you're somebody that wants your privacy, go with LibreWolf. I'm just gonna go with Brave, because it is what it is. Now of course there's a donation page, so if you wanna support the team, you can. And what thing, one thing they've changed is they've actually made it so that you can see in the background what your computer is actually doing. So as we're installing Talon, you can see that it's executing scripts. It's debloating the system around. We're at step two out of eight. Systems have blanked. It's fired up my uh, file manager over here. It's launched up a script. And uh, again, all of the stuff is effectively happening in the background. So we're going to wait a few minutes and we'll come back when all of this is effectively done and dusted. You can see right over here, it's installing the web browsing tools that we have. So for instance, Brave is working over here. It's installing the 64-bit version. Obviously the Windows installation that I'm on is 64-bit, it has to be. So I took a fat little dumpy, ladies and gentlemen, as this was happening. And uh, yeah, it's uh, customizing features for me. We're 30% there. Now, thankfully, this is a bit verbose, so it's actually showing you what's going on. And now we're at the restarting phase. So once everything is done and dusted, we should have a very de-bloated, very clean Windows installation that you will enjoy because, well, a lot of the fat has been trimmed. So let's just boot into it. I'll show you a thing. I'll show you some things around, and then we'll have our closing uh, thoughts. 
Woo! We're back, ladies and gentlemen. We just de-bloated windows, and with our digital Ozempic applied, you can see that start button has moved to where God has graced it from the beginning. And whoa, look at how naked that system is. Now you might be like, where's that, where's that AI? <laughs> doesn't exist except for a hardware choice. You might be like, where is Microsoft ClipChamp? Doesn't exist. Where is Edge even? We even went through the efforts to remove Edge. And within minutes, ladies and gentlemen, one dump later, you've actually gotten a completely new wallpaper and of course, a de-bloated installation of Windows. Now again, to give you a good idea of it, all right, obviously this is my Brave browser going, even the actual visual splendor of 11 has been cut down and de-bloated. So this is actually using a uh, kind of a low power uh, visual style. So a lot of those window snapping features don't really exist. Even if you right click, you'll notice that the style of the actual dialog prompts has kind of defaulted to like old school windows, opening up these personalized prompts, things do snap up a lot quicker. Again, even switching between like stuff. So if you don't mind obviously losing some of the luster that is Windows, uh, you know, 11's UI, um, and you wanna trade that a little bit for, again, you know, speed and responsiveness, this is great. So of course, if I wanna access even my PC, for instance, I think I can, wait, actually, how do I access like, oh wait, File Explorer. And then of course, if I go to the old File Explorer, you'll notice, yes, here's my Windows installation. It doesn't remove anything, doesn't give you extra dry space for, from what I understand. But yeah, it makes the system a lot more snappier. Now, of course, does this make your games run faster? Yes. Provided you have a low to mid-range system, you'll actually notice a significant performance bump. But let's say you have a system like mine, for instance. This is what my computer specs are. I'm gonna show you real quick. Let's just drop in a NeoFetch. I've got a Ryzen 9 5950X, so a bit of an aged processor, but a 4090 and about 128 gigs of really fast RAM. I don't have any issues with the actual, uh, you know, spec requirements. Like my computer probably wouldn't suffer like a, or, or gain a lot of performance, but I think overall responsiveness is just a general bump up, okay? A deep loaded version of Windows is always gonna be faster than Windows 11 or just any version of Windows or any operating system perfectly. Now, if you ask me, Muda, what's the best operating system in the market? Well, I wouldn't even say Linux, ladies and gentlemen. If I want to talk about stability and rock solid shit, this MacBook is more solid than my parents' marriage. And they've been together longer than Apple has been a thing. So you know what? I'm gonna chalk it up to that system. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, obviously, I think Macs are probably stable. And then Linux systems, you know, are as stable, which is what a lot of the internet kind of runs off of. Windows systems are not necessarily bad, but again, like I've always said with these videos, and this is just my closing thoughts, if you're ever at a point where you're doing this for performance gains, just consider switching over to Linux. Unless you absolutely need a specific piece of software, which I understand 100%, you know, downloading something like Bazite Linux, which is a gamer focused version of Linux, you may as well download this, install it within minutes, and it comes with basically everything you need as a gamer in about as, in, in, in about the right amount of bloat that an operating system effectively needs. It's not as razor thin as something like a headless arch installation, that's never gonna be the case, but uh, it's just enough. And if you don't mind a little bit more logical bloat, then switching to something like Linux Mint, which is what I use on this computer on a daily basis, is the best example. You will notice an actual increase in your system's responsiveness just by switching to a less bloated system. Now, of course, obviously that's your choice to make. I don't really care. But of course, remember Windows 10 is coming to an actual end. And nothing is more evident than if you go to sites by endof10.org, which gives you the ultimatum, October 14th, you gotta switch to 11 or Linux. And look, at the end of the day, I don't really care what you switch to. It's your choice. That's the whole fun of a computer. Whether you go to Linux, that's fine. But let's say that you're still on Windows. Then consider debloating it. In fact, debloat it right now, especially if you have a fresh install that you're playing with. Now, if you don't have a fresh install, I wouldn't recommend the script I ran. I would, however, recommend other scripts that are tried and true and proven to work on even established systems. That said, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully we redeemed this software. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.